Welcome to Cody Codes. My name is Cody, and like most of you, I still feel this way, but most of you might look at these salaries that uh, software engineers make and think like, oh my God, like how, how do they get paid so much money? And maybe some of you take it a step further, and then you think about like, okay, 250K for a software engineer job, that means every month they're getting paid like $20,000. No, no, it's not like that at all. It's not like if you're working at Amazon and all of a sudden you just get once a month, you get a check for 20 grand from Jeff Bezos. That's not how this works. This is not how any of this works. Whenever you see those numbers in articles or like other YouTube videos, what they're talking about is total compensation. Now, some of you may not be familiar with the term, but total compensation, it, it means what it kind of, what it sounds like. It means all of your compensation, everything that you are uh, given to work there and totaled up to a number. So whenever you see someone that is working in Silicon Valley and they're making 250K a year, it's, it's typically, that, that's not all cash is what I'm trying to say. So total compensation can be broken down into a lot of things. First of all, you start off with your base. This is the salary that you get every two weeks or twice a month, uh, depending on whatever HR schedule you're on. Um, another form of compensation, and a lot of it happens in software engineering, is stocks. So stocks can come in several different forms, and it depends on whether the, the company is public or not. They can come in as RSUs. You can also have an ESPP at your work, which is called a an employee stock purchase plan, which is where you can probably get a limited amount of stock in your own company at a cheaper rate to try to incentivize people having skin in the game. And a lot of startups will offer the idea of stock options. Now, I'm gonna have a, a, a later video explaining everything about stocks, but those are the three main things, RSUs, ESPP, and stock options. Another form of compensation is bonuses and those can be uh several different things like one of the one of the most popular ones is a sign-on bonus and this can be uh to compensate uh, relocation if it's not remote or it can just be incentivizing you to to join the team and usually that comes with a little bit of uh caveats because if they give you 20k for a sign-on sign on bonus and then you just bail after like two months you're gonna have to pay them back usually you have to be there for a whole year before that that clause expires another form of bonus is just kind of like your basic merit based bonus like if your team is doing well if you yourself are doing well you'll hit a percentage of your bonus uh, some other forms of compensation you could also consider the 401k match Another form is uh, a pension plan. You don't see those very often anymore. A lot of companies have just shifted the burden onto the employee to figure out their own retirement and gotten rid of pension plans, but they still do exist. They're just really hard to find. Uh, profit sharing is another form of compensation. And this is just what it sounds like. So if the company is doing really well, they, they, you know, they cut off a sliver of what their profit is and then they share it amongst the employees to incentivize them sticking around and also like you know just hey just do a good job and if we do well you do well that kind of thing uh, another form to consider as far as total compensation a lot of people don't uh, factor this in but in software engineering there's a lot of push for continuous learning and that includes classes or online webinars or just like textbooks and stuff like that, and also like conferences. So conferences can be kind of pricey back when you can travel to a conference and then go see talks and, and maybe even give a talk yourself. But conferences and a conference budget is something that can entice people to stick around and also entice people to take a job. Because if you have like five to 10K to, to go to RubyConf somewhere and give a talk, then that helps the company and it helps you learn as well. You may have clicked on this video because you're very curious how software engineers can get paid up to $250,000 a year. And that's not unheard of. It's, it's mostly in the Silicon Valley where you can get paid that. But let's, let's break that down. So a, a common like breakdown of what this could look like as a software engineer making 250K, they might be making about 
$140,000 a year. That's your normal pay that you would see every, every month or every couple of weeks. In this example, it could also be about $240,000 in stock that's spread over four years. So that's 60,000 for the first year. If we're thinking about just one year of compensation, you could also be getting a sign-on bonus of about 30K. And there's also could be a merit-based bonus for after every fiscal year, you get 20K. That's, that's the goal. So if you add all that up together, that's, that's about 250K. That's not uncommon to see in Silicon Valley. I hope this I hope this video kind of like shed some light on what these numbers mean because if you see these videos online where they're saying 350 500k of what software engineers are making that's not straight cash 98% of the time that is not straight cash that is divvied up into a bunch of different ways of getting paid and compensated into one grand total that totals up to about 250k or whatever the number is talking about so always keep that in mind when you're uh, when you're watching these videos because very few people clarify on that. But I hope that helps. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I'll see you on the next one.